Welcome back to Altium Academy, everybody. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be preparing our flyback converter module for manufacturing, and we're gonna do some testing and verification with our custom transformers. Now, we just got our custom transformers in the mail today. We're gonna to do a little bit of testing on them to make sure that they were manufactured correctly, that they have the right design values, and then I'm gonna get all of these parts into production, and by the end of this video, we're gonna have some working boards that we're gonna test and we're gonna find out whether or not they actually function to spec. First, we're gonna jump into Altium Designer and we're gonna see some final modifications that I did to this design to get it all prepped for manufacturing. And then we're gonna jump over to the bench and look at those transformers. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you're not up to speed on the current state of our flyback converter module project, make sure to check out the links in the description. You'll see a link to a video where we go over the circuit design and the PCB layout for our flyback converter module. There's another video where I show how to do the custom transformer design for this module. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the Rev B that I did for this project and we're going to put this Rev B into production and by the end of this video, we'll have some working boards that we'll have tested. So let's hop into all team designer and take a look at some of the mods that I applied to this circuit. First, what you see here on screen is the original flyback converter module circuit. We've got a little bit of circuit protection on the front end before this bridge rectifier. Then we have our switcher and then we have our snubber. We have our custom transformer and then we have a circuit over here with the shunt regulator to then very nicely control the current going into this optocoupler for regulation. On the modified circuit, I added a few things. You can see here I have the modified circuit. On the input side, you'll see here I added an earth connection using a 14 gauge pad. So this earth connection then connects to a couple of Y-type capacitors. These Y-type capacitors are used to address common mode noise. Typically what you would do is you would then put a common mode choke right after these capacitors. The challenge with that here is that this is using AC line voltage and those common mode chokes that can withstand AC line voltage can actually be pretty large. I wanted to include it in this design, but there's just not enough room for it to make it practical in this board. So I've omitted that. However, you can of course get the design files from the link in the description and add that yourself just from looking in the manufacturer part search panel. Next, coming off of here, you can see that I have my bridge between the primary side ground and the secondary side ground also using a Y-type capacitor. This is also for EMI control. And then coming down here, we have the rest of our original circuit as it was originally designed. On the 3.3 volt side, right here on this net, coming off of here, we're going to an output filter. Now, this output filter is a Murata EMI filter. They're pretty beefy. If you actually take a look at this footprint, you will see here, it's a pretty large component, and you'll see what it looks like once we get into the PCB layout. These filter circuits are really useful, and of course, they can withstand high power. So I'm including it here as an example. Next, let's take a look at the original PCB layout. So here on screen, I have the original PCB layout. If I just put it in 3D, you can see everything that's in this board. Here we've got our fusible resistor and our varistor. We've got our input capacitors, and then we've got our custom transformer, and then you can see all of our other circuitry is on the back side. If I just go to our new board, you can already see that I've had to extend the board size just a little bit to fit those new capacitors and that filter. If I put it into 3D, so here C10 and C11 are the new capacitors that I've added, and then C12 down here is our safety capacitor that bridges the secondary side ground and the primary side ground. Now over here on the secondary side of the board, you can see that we have F1. This is our large Murata filter. Now this EMI filter connects directly to our terminal block and that provides our 3.3 volt output. These filter circuits are really good because they address both common mode and differential mode noise in a single package. They also have really high roll off, they're fifth order filters, so they do a really great job of cutting out high frequency noise. Last update I've done to this board, you can see right here beneath the transformer, I've added a cutout beneath this transformer. And you can see here that it is going to create a couple of silk screen errors. That is because of course, this cutout is passing right through the area where we would need to print some silk screen. You can see that here on the top layer for this transformer as well as for C12, our safety capacitor. Then if you flip this thing over, you can also see that this occurs 
for you too. That is something to keep in mind when using cutouts. You may create a silk screen error if there are any silk screen lines that pass over that cutout. Also, the cutout here is not required, but it is typically done when you have an isolated system because it very nicely shows where that isolation and barrier is located. So those are all the board updates that I've applied. Now, we need to take a look at our custom transformers that we got in the mail. We're gonna test them, make sure that they have the right turns ratio and that they have the right inductances. So here's what our custom transformers look like and we wanna test these in two ways. First test I'm gonna do is with an oscilloscope and then the second test is with an LCR meter. Now to test this transformer with a scope, basically what we're doing is we're just looking in the time domain and we're gonna check the turns ratio by looking at the input voltage versus the output voltage. Now this transformer is gonna be operating with a 62 kilohertz switching frequency and we really don't need to use this big tech scope to be able to measure that. We can actually just use the little hand tech right here. So here on screen on the hand tech scope, I have my primary side in green and I have my secondary side in yellow. And you can see here that we have a turns ratio of about 20. It's actually a little bit less than 20. The scales are different by a factor of 20 and the curves mostly overlap at this level. So that tells you that your turns ratio is pretty close to 20. And in fact, I know it's a little bit less than 20 because here you can see that the yellow curve just overtakes the green curve just a little bit. So that's our first check to show that we have approximately the right values of this transformer. Next, let's take a look at the LCR meter. So the LCR meter is gonna be used to measure the primary side and the secondary side inductance. That's gonna tell us the actual turns ratio of this custom transformer. So here I have the LCR meter running. This is not the best LCR meter, but it works. It works primarily at low frequencies. So you can see here on screen that I'm set up for a one kilohertz frequency. And what I'm measuring right now is the self-inductance of the secondary side. You can see here that if I bring this up to its maximum of 10 kilohertz and I just let it settle, you see that we have a little bit of a higher value for the self-inductance on that secondary coil, but we're gonna take this to be a value of about 3.5. Now let's check the primary side coil. When we hook into the primary side coil, we see that it's 935 microhenries. Now this value of 935 microhenries is pretty close to what we calculated in the other video. If you remember from the other video, I think we calculated just over 800 microhenries. So there's almost a 20% difference. Now you might say, hey, that's a pretty big difference. Why do you have such a big difference? Well, you have to remember that the inductance factor for these cores can actually vary by up to 30%. So that could create anywhere from 20 to 30% deviation from the design inductance to the actual inductance of these custom transformers. However, I'm gonna run with this value of 935 microhenries and 3.5 microhenries on the secondary, and we're gonna jump onto the board and make sure that this is gonna work with our switcher within our target duty cycle values. Now that we have some measurements of the primary and secondary inductances. We can figure out what's turns ratio of that transformer. We can compare that to our design value. And then we can see what duty cycle uh, this converter will be running at with that transformer. First things first, we had, we're just gonna call it 935 microhenries on the primary. And then on the secondary, we had about 3.5 microhenries. So that gives a turns ratio, we'll call it little n, of about 16.34. So this is our turns ratio on that transformer, and it's a little lower than the turns ratio that we designed in the prior video. So if you remember, we were aiming for a turns ratio of about 19. That gave us a specific duty cycle in our design. Now, of course, we wanna ask, now that we actually have these custom transformers, what duty cycle is this value going to give us? Well, we can go through and calculate that just using the flyback transformer design equations. So if you recall, we have something called a flyback voltage in a flyback converter, and that's going to be equal to the duty cycle divided by one minus the duty cycle times V sub n. Then we also have a equation for our turns ratio, which is equal to this fraction, and that is multiplied by our input divided by our target output voltage plus the voltage drop across our rectifier diode. So here, our output voltage that we're targeting is 3.3 volts. Our diode has a 0.5 volt voltage drop. Here, this is our line voltage in after it's been rectified. Since we're using AC as the input, this is going to be 170 volts. You can use these two equations to then solve for the duty cycle as a function of N. 
So if you go through and do that, you are going to get D is equal to N multiplied by the out plus the diode divided by the in plus N times V out plus V diode. Now, if we plug in all of these numbers into our duty cycle equation, we're gonna get that D is equal to 26.7%. So, is this good, is this bad? Well, I think it's just fine. Remember, your switcher is going to adjust its duty cycle to target your output voltage based on changes in the input voltage. Now, the duty cycle has to sit within a specific range because your switcher can only switch within certain duty cycle limits. So, this is still within those duty cycle limits. So, that's good. That means that this thing is going to work just fine. And, in fact, if you just try to calculate the value of D for different values of V in, you'll be able to see here that you can actually accommodate a pretty wide range of input voltages and still hit this output voltage even with this turns ratio. So now that we've tested our custom transformer and I've verified that it's going to work in our design with our switcher, I'm comfortable putting this thing into manufacturing. I'm going to send these boards off to get produced and I'll see you in a couple weeks and we'll test the boards and see if they work. So here we are with our assembled PCB. Here is the transformer that we were testing earlier and then here we have them both assembled onto one board. You can see I've got it plugged in and you can see right here on the DC load we're at about 3.26 volts. So a little under the value that we were targeting, but I think still good enough for a lot of applications. So let's take a look here at the power output. If I just start ramping this up on the DC load, we can eventually converge on what our maximum power is. As you start to ramp up on uh, the power output, the voltage drops out a little bit. That's pretty standard on a lot of switching regulators. We're actually getting up higher than we targeted previously. Um, previously, we were targeting about, you know, two, maybe two and a half watts. We're still going. Let's see how far it goes until it drops out. Okay, so 3.2 watts, you can see it's starting to drop out and go into short circuit mode. So we can get the two watts out of this that we were projecting. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna call it a successful project. I think here we might wanna adjust the feedback network just a little bit so that we can get up to the 3.3 volts when we're at zero power output. But uh, that's a small change on this board. I can do that just by desoldering some of the resistors on the back side. But other than that, we're good. I like it. Let's call it a success. Thanks for watching this whole series of videos, everybody. Make sure to check out the link in the description. You can get access to the design files. And of course, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.